Hello, we are back. We are doing it. Henrietta got a cute little short haircut. I love it. <laughs> we are doing uh, Mary Mantle's Consecration. And today we're doing the 18th star. There are 46 stars on her mantle. And every day is a different star. Today we are going to do self-control. By the way, <laughs> um, the stars that are on the mantle on Juan Diego are, are, they can predict the exact day because they are arranged. You know, the stars are arranged a certain way each day. The stars that are on her mantle are, are, are arranged to the day of when the, the apparition took place or when, when she, I think when she looked through the eyeballs, I think that's when it was, but the, they are in the right constellation for the exact date. There's no Did way. Did you post that um, thing? Yes. I read it. I'll that was so interesting, guys. Read yeah. it if you get a chance to. I'll um, repost it today. Yeah, she she posted it a couple days ago on, yeah. I didn't know this. I mean, I knew yeah. the story of, of, of San Diego, yeah. San Juan Diego, Juan Diego. But I didn't know about the eye. Yeah. In the, well, I'm not going to tell you anymore, guys. you got to read you, it. <laughs> you, you know about the, the stars, that they are in a certain, uh, the way that they are, are put is the exact means that's the day. Like the stars move all the time. They, they are in, in the exact position for that day. There's no way a human being could have produced it. That's the Beautiful. Point. It's the science. Okay, let's get focused. Self-control. Eight, yes, let's have some. Self-control, girl. Mouth control. 18th star, self-control. To be human is to possess an area of solitude in our personal makeup. No one but God has access to this solitude, and no one ever will. It is what makes us entirely separate from one another. No scene can bring this reality to the forefront more than imagining myself on my deathbed. I am surrounded by loved ones, people who know me most intimately. And yet, in spite of all their loving care and heartfelt words, I will at this moment be alone, totally alone. Not one person is, quote, with me in the innermost regions of my being. And no one can accompany me in my death, glimpses of such ex ex existential aloneness come to me at the hour of an impactful decision or of assuming an important responsibility. I must ask you, Mary, how did you do it? When the angel Gabriel appeared, an immense wall of historical responsibility rose before you, and you had to decide whether or not to climb it alone. Your life could proceed quietly if you said no. To say yes meant chaos would shatter your well-ordered and serene life. To bear a child before marriage implied that Joseph would divorce you. You could be stoned to death due to presumed adultery. You would be socially marginalized and stigmatized, labeled with the most offensive name a woman could be given in that time, Harufa, Harafa, the raped one. Mary, how is it that under such tremendous pressure, you did not dissolve emotionally? Why did your nerves not give way? How did you maintain such self-control? Why did you not try to run and hide and forget. The burden of responsibility always brings with it the burden of solitude, and you had to carry this bur burden completely alone. Because it regarded something that would happen once and only once for the first time and never again in the news became known, no one would ever believe you. They would say that you had lost your mind. I am overwhelmed and awed by your maturity. You were but around 14, conscious of the gravity 
of the encounter with the angel and of your decision. You stood there alone without consulting anyone, without a single manifestation of human support. And you took the risk of saying the yes of your life without any other motive than your faith and your love. All of history could never gather enough praise to appreciate and admire such grandeur. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I think, well, she was born as the Immaculate Conception. I'm not saying it made it easier for her. She was still a human. She still had human feelings and human, um, uh, what do you call human, you know, human emotions, all the emotions that, um, that, that we have, you know, and I can't imagine her, you know, she said yes to everything. She didn't just say yes to bearing this child. She said yes to all of it. And, and she had a supernatural understanding like God in, you know, just like when we pray, God speaks to us and God, you know, infused this knowledge to her of what she was going to endure supposedly. That's why some- well, well, from a very young age, um, Anne, her mother, um, she came from the Asinian line. I guess it's a, it's a very holy and very pious community um, in those days. And she knew that Mary was the one. She would get dreams. They would get visions. They would prophesy. It was extremely, a very extremely holy, um, like a group of people. And so they were called the Asinians, right? But, but the Bible does say she was confused when the angel came to her. So she did not know. Oh, yeah, she was. She was confused. Yeah. Not confused, but she just was like, how can that happen? Well, she's like, what is this? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. yeah. So she didn't know, no. And, and, it, and she was the most solitary woman in the world. There was no other woman that happened to and no other woman before or since. So she was truly solitude. She was 14. And, but, you know, I think the kids back then were more mature, if you ask me. Um, they, they certainly were not the spoiled children we have today. I'm sorry. Um, but it, 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 it is a solitary, um, moment when we are on our deathbed and we can give way to fear with Satan, or we can stay focused on God. And because I notice when I'm in fear, that's when I know that a little demon is sitting there trying to scare me and saying things to me. When I am in at peace, I know that I am resting in God. And I get at fear a lot. I have huge fear and anxiety. But the more I pray, the more that my anxiety is relieved. Now with this Lectio Divina, I'm really getting a lot of comfort because it's much more direct and I didn't realize that. So... I think that, you know, the best thing to look for in self-control is, is the Holy Spirit is calling on your Holy Spirit, your guardian angel, your, um, uh, I had to go and do a court thing one time. And my mother told me, imagine Mary on one side, um, uh, Jesus on the other and St. Michael behind you. I wish I would have known about Joseph because I would have added him in there too, but I didn't know about since until we did the consecration. So we can call on, on when we are feeling alone, when you are on that, that deathbed, that you are alone, call on them. The more you get to know them now through prayer, learning about them, asking them to pray for you, the more, when you get to your deathbed, you're going to know them. And you're going to already be comfortable speaking and asking them to pray for you. So, you know, we, we are so lucky in the Catholic faith to have knowledge <clears throat> and to have the, the history 
and the understanding of the saints and they're they're helping us to have the teaching in our our catechism that teaches us about prayer we have so many tools and I just listened to a, a Jewish thing. My daughter is a uh, 50% Ashkenazi Jew. So anything that I'd like to teach her about that other side of her. And I don't know the name, but this guy was walking in the Holocaust as an 11 year old boy. And he felt very alone. And he remembered suddenly a story that his, I don't know if it was his mother or someone that says it's some kind of entity for them. They are never alone. And I thought, well, we have that as Christian. We, God gave us the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He sent the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us speak to him. We are never alone. We have the Holy Spirit. And in the Trinity, that means we have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We have all of them with us. And then we have the saints. We are the luckiest people in the world. We are never alone and they can help us with self-control they can help us you know i don't know which saint is is the saint for self-control but i'm going to find it out today whenever i have a problem and i want to learn who is the saint for that i will look them up and i'll say okay at the end of this i want to look up the saint to each of these stars and i'm going to do a little litany my mary mantle litany of the saints that I'm going to ask, I'm going to say their name and I'm going to say, pray for me. That's not hard. It's not going to take up any extra time, but maybe a minute of my morning. So we're never alone. And we always have the potential to have self-control. And the more you pray and the more you listen to things like um, silent um, by uh, Cardinal uh I think, is it Robert Seurat? Um, Cardinal Seurat. I'll put the link in. Uh, you could do your own um, silent retreat, listening to that all day and not speaking much and just focusing on that. And then there was another one I was listening to, Fulton Sheen. Oh, it was about prayer. So, um, and you can, whatever you ask God to do in his name, he'll do. And you can say, Lord, help me to have self-control. If there's something you're angry about and you're thinking, I want to say this or do this, I want, you can gain self-control. You have all the tools in, in Catholicism that can help you. The saints, the prayers, the, um, the Holy Spirit. Um, and when you ask for anything in God's name, anything, he's going to give it to you if it is for the good of your soul and if you ask him the holy spirit to help you to move toward more self-control he'll start setting up little lessons for you you can have anything in god if you ask in jesus name also guys remember to pray your rosary today it goes along with every star we've been doing every day there's 46 stars just concentrate and ponder on self-control today. But Jeanette, could you just give us something that you do for some self-control? Do you have one little tool that you can share from your personal life? I struggle with self-control a lot, especially when I'm looking on Amazon and I want to buy stuff. But what do you what what do you do to stop yourself when you can't? I think I think instantly of if Jesus Jesus is right there with me, doing what exactly I'm doing, watching me silently. He's with me. And I know he's not appreciating it. So I immediately apologize so that to that try to get out of it. Yes, I feel conscience. I feel that I shouldn't be doing these things. And um I feel that Jesus, you know, what would he think? Right. What is he thinking as he's watching me? So at, at, yeah, at night time, so. do you do a do you do a list of the our self conscience? Do you do that um, examination of conscience at bedtime? I um at night time I like to do um my what do you call it? oh my god I am heartily sorry for having forgiven okay. for having yeah it's my act of contrition I do at night 
So you, you, your tool is to try to stay conscious of sin that God yes. is right there with you and yes. holding your shoulder, helping you to take control back. So we all have little tools. We may not realize them, that they're a tool for us, but realize what tools you do have. So, but say your rosary. It, it, yes, don't forget your rosary, guys. That really does help. Yeah. Because if, you know, instead of looking on Amazon, if I remember, oh, I didn't listen to my rosary today. So I will put on my rosary today. I listened to my rosary on the way to the doctor's office because I was nervous about this test that I had to do, which thank God everything was fine. And so um, I prayed the rosary to there and that gave me peace and right. sense of mind. Right. And so, yeah, if, as long as you keep God present in your day, throughout your day, all the time, then when you start slipping, you'll catch yourself. You'll yeah. catch yourself. And I just want to say one more thing before we ha uh, hang up. Um, that when I went to that retreat, he said, you'll know when there's a demon around when you're feeling tempted. So ever since then, that has helped me, especially with food. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, that's another thing. not going to win. Yeah. So now I, that's a little, a brand new tool. I just learned on my retreat. Retreats are good to pick up spiritual tools. So anyway, yes, they are very good for that. Right. Okay, guys, remember to pray your rosary and we'll see you tomorrow. God willing. Bye-bye.